completing the accounting cycle part two. Today we're going to discuss closing entries. Now at this point we've gone through the accounting cycle and we're all the way up to the last three processes where we need to pre prepare the closing entries and post them to the ledger and create what is known as the post-closing trial balance. Closing entries, these accounts are relatively permanent from year to year. They're called permanent accounts or real accounts. These accounts are carried forward from year to year. Now, let's talk about what would be a permanent account. Permanent accounts do not close at the end of the year, which means from one year to the next, they're going to carry a balance. Asset accounts are permanent accounts. Liability accounts are permanent accounts. And the capital account is a permanent account. But revenues and expenses, income summary and drawings, they are all considered to be temporary accounts and they close. Now accounts that report amounts for only one period are called temporary accounts or nominal accounts. Temporary accounts are not carried forward because they relate to only one period, revenues, expenses, income summary, and the drawings only represent for a period, not multiple periods. To report amounts for only one period, temporary accounts should have zero balances at the beginning of the next period. So December 31st, we close the temporary account. January 1st, we start over with zero balances. However, the permanent account continue from December 31st to January 1st with the balance that they had. Cash will move forward, accounts receivable will move forward, liabilities, supplies, et cetera, et cetera. I want you to kind of think of this. You don't want your checking account to go to zero December 31st and start back at zero on January 1st. And you definitely don't want people to forget that they owe you money as of December 31st, just like we can't forget who we owe money to as of December 31st. It would be nice to be able to forget our bills from year to year. However, the world doesn't work that way. To achieve this, in the closing entries, the revenue and expense account balances are transferred to income summary at the end of the period. This is also known as closing revenue to income summary and closing expenses to income summary. The word transferred is used for the purposes of this lecture. However, we consider this to be closing revenue to income summary and expenses to income summary. The balance of the income summary net income or net loss is then transferred to the owner's capital account. By the time you close revenue to income summary and expenses to income summary, you're going to have all revenue and expense accounts, once they're, those entries are posted to the ledger, will have zero balances. Income summary is going to have two entries, a debit and a credit, and the difference between that debit and credit entry, the revenue and expenses, represents the net income or the net loss. You can verify the total of income summary by checking the income statement that you've already prepared. If the net income or net loss is the same information that you have in income summary, then you have closed the accounts correctly. The balance of the owner's drawing account is also transferred to the owner's capital account. So once we close income summary to capital, we then close drawing to capital. We are not, in either one of these closing entries, closing the capital account. I repeat, we do not close the capital account. Income summary closes to capital. Drawing closes to capital. But capital is a permanent account and does not close. This is a common mistake that I've seen over the history of being an accounting instructor of people attempting to close the capital account. The entries that transfer these balances are called closing entries. And there are four closing entries. The first closing entry is revenues. We close revenues to income summary. The second entry is expenses. We close expenses to income summary. The third entry is to close income summary to capital. And the fourth entry is to close drawing to capital. So one, two, 
three, four. They are prepared in this order. Do not try to move them out of this order. It will not work and it will be incorrect. Revenues are close to income summary. Expenses are close to income summary. Income summary is close to capital. Drawing is close to capital. Four closing entries, revenues, expenses, income summary, drawing. I repeat, capital does not close. We are not closing capital in any of these entries. Income summary is considered to be a temporary account because it's only used during the closing process. You will not use this account any other time of the year. At the end of the closing process, the income summary will also have a zero balance. So if income summary has anything left in it in the ledger, you have done something incorrect. Income summary is also considered at times to be a clearing account. So you will hear some people call it a temporary account, a clearing account. Understand that it summarizes revenue and expenses to close them to capital and then to close drawing to capital. Let's look at an example of some closing entries that relate to net solutions, the example that they use in the book throughout chapters one, two, three, and four. On the income statement we had Fees earned is sixteen thousand eight hundred and forty, and rent revenue of one hundred and twenty. And in the first journal entry, we need to close the revenue accounts to income summary. Now we know normally that revenue is increased with a debit, a credit. So if we debit the revenue accounts, we're actually decreasing them. So we're going to debit the revenue accounts for the amounts that are shown in the ledger, and we're going to credit income summary for the total of these two balances. So fees earned, 16840 rent revenue, 120 Both accounts are debited and credited to income summary for 16960 which is your total revenues for this period. The second step is to close all expense accounts. Please note that we're listing all expenses individually, not one lump sum. If you do this as expenses and you give me a lump sum, that will be incorrect because then your ledgers will be incorrect. We list every expense out. We debit income summary for the total amount of all expenses and then we credit the expense accounts for their individual amount. You can also verify this information on the income statement because this should reflect your total expenses. So now, once you post these entries and these entries to the ledger, revenues and expenses have zero balances, and income summary has a credit of 16960 and a debit of 9855 The difference between the revenue and the expenses is the net income. And we see this in step three. 16960 take away 9855 equals $7,105 of income. Verify this on the income statement. To close income summary to capital, we're going to debit income summary for $7,105 and credit capital for $7,105. This particular entry is subject to change if there is a net loss. I want you to think about the statement of owner's equity when looking at closing entries. What we're doing is basically, in these last two entries, is we're doing what happens in the statement of owner's equity, where we add in the net income to increase capital, and then later on, we're going to take out the drawing to decrease capital. However, we're not closing the capital account. This amount here, $7,105 to close income summary, is the difference between the revenue entry and the expense entry. This is not closing capital. If there is a net income, you will debit income summary and credit capital. If the company has a net loss, you will debit capital and credit income summary. In step four, we're going to close the drawing account. And we know that drawing has a negative effect on capital. So we will debit capital for the amount of the draw 
and credit the drawing account for 4000 or the amount of the draw, to bring this particular account to a close. By the time you finish all four of the closing entries, revenue, expenses, income summary, and drawing will have a zero balance, and capital will have either increased or decreased, and you can verify that information on the Statement of Owner's Equity. Temporary account balances. After closing entries are posted, all of the temporary accounts have a zero balance at this point. So let's take a look at some of the ledgers for net solutions. We've got the cash account. We know that we're not closing cash because we're not going to forget that we have money in the bank from December to January. None of the assets close, so you can pretty much leave assets alone. Liabilities are going to stay open. And while we do use the capital account during the closing entries, we are not closing capital, we're actually leaving it open. So we've got our adjusting entries in there and we see our balances. And then we get over here to the capital account, here's drawing, here's the expense accounts, and you see that the last line in the drawing account, this was the fourth closing entry, we credited this account for 4000 bringing it to zero. Look what happened to capital. We started off with 25000 We credited this account for 7105 which represents the net income. And then we debited for 4000 which is the drawing, bringing the ending capital balance to 28105 You can verify this on the Statement of Owner's Equity as well as the balance sheet. Note, when posting the closing entries, we write the date, closing, where we can reference the journal page to, do the journal entry, and then bring the account to a new balance. Temporary accounts will have a zero balance. Again, here are your zero balance accounts. See what happens to income summary. We credited for 16960 representing the revenue. We debited for 9855 representing the expenses, bringing the total to this account to 7105 and then we closed income summary to capital, bringing it down to a zero balance. So as you can see, a listing of all of the ledgers, we're seeing that all accounts that close are brought to a zero balance. So let's take a look at this. Let's look at an example. After the accounts have been adjusted at July 31st, the end of the fiscal year, the following balances are taken from the ledger of Capital A Services Company. Capital is 615,850. Drawing is 25,000. Fees earned 380,450. Wages expense was 250,000. Rent expense 65,000. Supplies expense, 18250 and miscellaneous expense is 6200 I want you to pause the video now and complete the four closing entries. And when you've finished, resume the video and check your answers against what I post. Pause now. Okay, so if you completed the entries, you should be verifying that the first closing entry was to close fees earned. We debit fees earned for the total amount, credit income summary for the amount. This brings revenues to a close. We close the expense accounts by debiting income summary and crediting the expense accounts. This brings the expense accounts to a close. In the third journal entry, we are going to close income summary. Again, the 41000 is the difference between revenue and expenses, a net income of 41000 We increase capital by this amount. In the fourth closing entry, we're going to close drawing, so we debit capital and credit the drawing accounts. If you would like additional practice, you can pause the video now and go to practice exercise 44A and 44B and check yourself with the solutions that are posted in ANGEL. The post-closing trial balance is prepared after the closing entries have been posted. 
The purpose of the post-closing trial balance is to verify that the ledger is still in balance at the beginning of the next period. So, after we did all the closing entries and we posted all of those closing entries to the ledgers, we then go back and we look at all the accounts that are still open, which are permanent accounts, and we list them in a post-closing trial balance and we determine if we have debit credit equality. So you start with the name of the company, which is a post-closing trial balance, put the date, you list your assets, your liabilities, and then your capital account. The only thing that should be on a post-closing trial balance are assets, liabilities, and the capital account. And we see that our debits and our credits equal. And once we prove the equality of the debits and the credits, then we have balanced our post-closing trial balance. And then we can continue on with the rest of the year and close out. Because trust me, as an accountant, your job is never finished. This concludes part two of completing the accounting cycle. You may resume with your studies.